everybody, it's Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, for the second half of our double header class session. We just finished up the Gingerbread Memories and More card making class, and in case you missed it, uh, the replay is available right now in the Cards by Christine Facebook page, and you can watch the replay, and if you're inspired to make some gingerbread cards, um, that's the class for you <laughs> to go back and watch. Uh, right now, what we're going to do is the Let's Just Stamp featuring the Tidings and Trimmings stamp set. So, let's see here. Oh, I just went to Gingerbread Memories and more. Um, that's not the class that I want. <laughs> so, let me see if I can find myself live. Because then I can watch along with you guys and answer any of the questions you might have while we are doing this. So, I think I have Laura and Chris and Karen and Sherry and Denise. I think that's the right class. You guys, I'm wearing the same outfit from the last class, so I think I'm in the right one. Hello again, Randy says, so I'm in the right one. Hi, Karen Wettstein. So here's Kathy Phillips from Leonard, Minnesota. Woohoo! Okay. Hi, Tammy Steckling. Hi, Jewel. Thanks for sharing, everybody. I appreciate it. Hi, Gloria. Uh, we are... Back in the thick of it. Hi, Julie Bierschbach. So do you guys, <laughs> I brought this up earlier. I never even looked up when the Packer game is. <laughs> so I'm from Wisconsin. So that is an important thing for our area here is to know when the Packers play, but I never know. So hi, Nanette. So hi, Angela. Somebody's got to pipe in here and tell me when the, <laughs> when the game is. Um, I have a, a gal I'm supposed to call back. Um, uh, and it was either before the game or after the game, <laughs> and, and I got to know when I got to call her back, <laughs> so if somebody wants to comment, that would be awesome, because <laughs> it's easier than me looking it up, so we're going to do Let's Just Stamp, and I realized at the end of the Gingerbread Memories and More class, I did not do a door prize for somebody who signed up for that class, so there were 24 people that signed up for class, oh, it's on right now, okay, thanks, Gloria, <laughs> I appreciate that, oh, you guys are all in, it's on right now, so you, you guys are probably like, Flipping back and forth between me and the Packer game, then I guess. <laughs> so, um, perfect. Yep, they're playing right now. So, so when we get done with this class, I need you guys to help me remember that we're gonna do a door price drawing for the 24 people that signed up for the gingerbread class. We'll also do a door price drawing for those that placed an order to get this class for free. Um, there were, well, there were enough people. So. Angela, you need your card kits because you just told me you wanted to add, or add this one on and you were going to get me an order for it. So I will include you in the drawing because that's the plan. Um, so we're going to do a drawing for this class. And then I also have the ink, paper, scissors, um, whimsy cards that have winners drawn for those. So we'll announce who those winners are. And we're also going to share the, um, uh, the next Let's Just Stamp for December cards so you can see them. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. So we'll go over the next, let's just stamp. And then also, you guys, I wanted, to, I bench at the end of the gingerbread class to show you the ink, paper, scissors featuring the gingerbread, and I completely forgot. So that's another thing too, because I still have about 10 sets of the gingerbread memories and more ink, paper, scissors card class still available. Hi, Tabitha. Um, for today, for this let's just stamp, I'm looking down, I have three sets left. So if you guys get through um, or during the middle of my class, if anybody is interested in getting these three card kits, um, you could get them for a fee, which mailing is $17 for the cash option, or they would be free with a $35 order using my current host code. So I do have three sets available and they are open for the first three people that tell me they want them. So. Um, hi, Marsha. I saw Marsha, just so you know, I did see the check you left me in the mailbox and I saw that your card kits were gone off the counter. So I, I knew you were here. <laughs> so um, I did get it, by the way. So I know you guys, whenever you send me checks or payments and they come via the mail, I always try to follow up to let you know that I got them. So I meant to tell you that, Marsha. So Mary Jean, hello from up north with the hubby. Hi. <laughs> so you guys, Hi, Ethel. So this class is the one that I do in conjunction with Diane Bogenhagen. Uh, Diane and I design these cards together, and she does the in-person class, and she's doing it in the Hive here on Tuesday night. Um, it's my date night, so usually she has the class. Um, 
She's got, I think, about eight people signed up, and she's planning for a few more. Hi, Ann Adams. Uh, so if anybody's interested in doing this class live, um, can you get an order code to place your own order? Yes, Angela, when I flip the camera down, the code will be seen in the camera, or you can go to my website and get the code. There is a link, and you can copy and paste that link into your order, your screen. So, um, so how it works for you guys for the PDFs. I was just reading the next question about when are the PDFs available? Hi, Barbara. Hi, Ann. Hi, Kay. Hi, Judy Bobo. Hi, Barbara. Okay, so how my PDFs work is I always add them to my online class, like the it's online classes. In my, It's a link at the top um, for shopping, I think. And then you can get my past PDF tutorials. And I do not put them in there until after the Facebook Live class is done because I include my links. Hi, Tara Stay from Hawaii. Um, so I include my links to the PDF or the links to the videos in the PDF. So right, right now, this class, I don't ever put let's just stamp in there, but for like ink, paper, scissors, my monthly class, my, um, uh, my sweet classes, and most of my online classes, I put a PDF tutorial in the store. And after the, um, the video is uploaded to YouTube, I add that link and the Facebook link to the PDF. So it's usually within a few days after the class. I don't always get to it instantaneously after class because sometimes I have other things I need to attend to, but usually within a week. I, I, sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's seven days, sometimes it's at night. It just depends what my life is like. <laughs> so hi, Sandy. So yeah, so it's always after class that they're available. And so like right now, I just downloaded the gingerbread class. And as soon as I can get it into YouTube and publish it, I, I'll do that. So oh, hi again from North Dakota. Yes, <laughs> Sandy's with me for a double header. Hi, Julie. A bunch of you guys are. So Tidings and Trimmings is an awesome suite of products in the annual catalog. So Diane and I went to the annual catalog for this because we figured that you guys would be so inundated with stuff from the mini catalog that it would be nice to bring back some and showcase some products from the annual catalog. Um, Facebook and the constant interruption of videos. <laughs> I don't know what that means, <laughs> but you have a purple face, <laughs> a purple smiley face, weird. <laughs> so, um, so what we did is we made three cards and this set does come with a die set. So it can be a bundle, but we designed the cards in a way that you didn't need to have the dies. Um, oh, it's Sue's time watching me. The first time watching I do have kits left, Sue. I have three left. Hi, Emily. Thanks for sharing. Everybody, I appreciate it when you share it. I know that you comment that you share, and I, I love every one of you that says that you shared it because sharing me is um, a, a blessing because I can share my creativity and craftiness with your friends and family. So thank you to everybody that shared. Uh, Sue, what you should do is when I flip my camera down, send me an email or text me. And when you text me, you guys, tell me your name. <laughs> I get sometimes random texts from people wanting things, and I don't know your name because <laughs> I don't have your phone number saved in my phone. So if you do text me or email me, just tell me what you're looking for and I can help you with it. So Sue, if you tell me in this um, video that you want a kit, I will make sure to put your name down for a kit and then we'll figure out the financing part later. So, so tidings and trimmings is, this is the let's just stamp class. And so the first time I did this class was July, I think 24th and hi Deanne. And July 24th uh, was the first, oh, you're very welcome, Sue. Um, July 20, I think it was July 24th. It was whatever that Sunday was. It was either the 24th or the 25th. And I spent about two and a half hours with that class. And the first hour was the intricacies and for those people that are just starting out with stamping. And I kind of went forward with that being my basis for teaching people. And I always refer people if they're new to me um, and wondering what stamping is all about and what does it entail and what do you need? Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. <laughs> I refer people back to that video. Thanks for sharing, Sandy and Denise. Um, oh, the, the pause. Okay, so here's the thing about the video, you guys. I know I'm watching it live with you right now and I'm not pausing and I like it. I watch it like a hawk. Um, what people have told me, if you have issues with your video freezing or pausing, that if you're watching the comments, the comments are sucking up data and you should exit out of the watching the comments and maybe pop in every now and then. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Susie. Hi, Mary. Um, so my Brett, Julie said I received a pretty purple packet today, yesterday. Woohoo. Yes, your, your packet went out. That's awesome. Uh, so if you guys are having problems with the video, 
I'm uploading it successfully, but how it has to do is it downloads into your phone and it all depends on your internet provider and how the data works. And so if you're having issues with pausing and popping in and out, uh, turn your comments off or get it in a, a way that you're not looking at the comments because people have told me when they have the comments off is when they have the most successful video coming through. So, so just a little side note on that. And so back to the let's just stamp for beginners. When we make these cards, we try not to use any, we don't, we don't use dies and we don't use stamps. Very rarely do we use punches. And in these cards tonight, this afternoon, we did use a punch. We rounded the corners, but you could always round the corners with a scissors if you needed to. So, yep, hi Jean Terwilliger again. <laughs> so, so we really limit that. So, but the thing is, we love layers too. So the cards may, we might call them beginner cards, but they really truly are, um, there are lots of layers and we love to dimensionalize and add a ribbon and add embellishments. So we like to make pretty cards for beginners. <laughs> so, so going back to that beginners thing, if you guys are new to me, what I encourage you to do is go to either my website, cardsbycrispy.com, go to my events calendar and scroll backwards through the calendar and find July. July 24th, I believe was the Sunday. And I copy and paste every link for my Facebook Live and my YouTube in the event. And so you, all you have to do is go there, copy and paste the link, put it in your browser, and you can watch the video. And so that's how you can find it very easily. If, hi, Lisa Opperman. Hi, Barbara, Barbara Gabby. Yes, Denise also said go out and come back and that helps as well. So that's exactly it. Hi, Patricia Settle. The other option is if you're in Facebook and you're in my Facebook page, Cards by Christine, and you go to the video section and you type in the keyword in the search field, if you type in blossoms in bloom, uh, let's just stamp like those keywords. It will also bring up that video and you can watch that video. So if you've watched it already, you don't need to watch it again. And I don't feel the need to continue to always do that one hour segment at the beginning of every one of these classes for let's just stamp because why reinvent the wheel, <laughs> right? I've already done it and um, I'm always available. Like, so this is a Facebook live right now. You guys ask me questions as much as you want. I, hi, Pam Newhauser. Hi, Carissa. Tabith is here and new. Yes. And if you guys are new and you're not sure how things work, uh, all you have to do is ask. I watch these comments like a hawk. Uh, so as this is live, um, you can ask and I'll try to answer them. And there's a lot of lovely ladies in this community that I have that are also help answer the questions. I have so many awesome people that watch and they get on the horn too and they'll reply and help as well. Now, if you're watching the replay for any of my videos, um, I might not catch it if you ask a question in the replay. And I have like Carissa watches the replay sometimes. And if she sees somebody ask a question after the fact, she'll screenshot it and send it to me. Bless her heart. She helps me out a lot. And then I can always follow up with you. But if you are watching the replay of this, I always encourage you to send me an email, text me, uh, call me. Facebook message me, ask me your questions that way so that I can make sure I get them answered and that you're not left hanging in the air <laughs> without a response. So hi, Stacey Ray. Okay, hopefully that helps a bunch of the new people that have started to watch me. Uh, I know you gotta start somewhere and, and you don't wanna be overwhelmed with a new hobby. You wanna get started on the right foot moving forward and you wanna have the supplies that you need to help you be successful in your crafting endeavors. Um, and so with this class in particular, we try not to use a lot of extras. We keep it more simple with just inks, stamps, blocks, cardstock, um, and adhesives. And those are like the five core things that you need for card making. And uh, I know that sometimes you don't always have the cutter or the, the ability to cut paper down like to the size that you need. And sometimes when you're starting off, if you're wanting to know what you can do to be creative, without having to buy a whole bunch of supplies. I have suggestions and I can help you guys out with that. So, okay, uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. That's no question. So <laughs> Elena always says, I have a dumb question. No, you don't. There aren't any dumb questions. <laughs> the only dumb question is the question that you don't ask. <laughs> so, hi, Sonia from Melbourne, Australia. Woohoo! So, all right. So roll call, you guys. So I don't know if Sue decided to take the class or not. Sue was she was just asking if she could take it. Uh, Sue, let me just see. I'm scrolling back to get Somerville. Okay, so 
I'm not sure, Sue, if you still want the, if you do want the class, just say, yep, I want this class and I'll make sure to get you on my class list. That's all that entails is to take a class with me is you have to let me know you want the class first and foremost. And I add you to my list. And then we could always figure out if you need to pay a fee for it or if you want to place an order to get it for free. So we work that out. So thank you for your congratulations, Barbara. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, okay. So roll call, you guys, Sandy Wicklander, Karen Wettstein, Deanna Stell, Julie Bierschbach, Barb Barco, Annette Rollin, Ellen Brover, Leslie McMinn, Stacy Ray, Barbara Gobby, Feline Mays, Laura Sullivan, Barbara Moynan, Tammy Steckling, Janet Deshane, Faye Godby, Angela Knutson, and Sue Somerville just said she would like the kit. So you are on my list. Um, and Sue, again, we can figure out after the fact. I will set aside a set of cards for you. They go in the mail to you. Um, and then what I do is I'll just need to figure out if you want to send me a check, if you want to pay electronically, or if you want to place an order and get them for free. So we'll figure that out later. So we have 18 signed up right now. I do have two kits available in case anybody else is interested. Okay, so I know that I have two, two newbies that took this class with me. Annette and Janet. I'm not sure if they're watching or not, but they were going to get together and they got the stamp set, they got the inks, they've got a block. And so I know that I have some new people watching. So I'm going to be a little bit more particular about how I talk about things in case they are watching this and need extra guidance. So, yep, sounds good, Sue. Hi, Melanie Foy. Long time no see. So, so Annette and Janet are new. They just started stamping with Diane and, and myself about a month and a half or two months ago. So they're, they're fresh. <laughs> so, and they, I want to make sure that they're successful. So I'm not, I don't even have my stamps on the blocks right now. I don't have anything really like, I got everything here, but I don't have it set up per se. Cause I want to show everybody how it works to get stamps and cases and what you need for blocks and inks and all that good stuff. Um, Becky said she forgot to go on the live for the whimsy cards, but I did catch the replay and loved them. Oh, thank you, Becky. I love making cute cards to share with you guys. <laughs> so, all right. So let me flip down and we're going to look here. So this is the annual catalog. You guys, if you don't have a demonstrator and you are not a demonstrator, or I should say a discount shopper, and you're new to Stampin' Up! and you need somebody to help you, um, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd love to get you a copy of the annual catalog. Um, yes, hi, Patty. Long time no see. <laughs> so if you guys, if, if you don't have anybody that we work with and you're not a discount shopper or demonstrator, please reach out to me. I'd love to get a catalog into your hands so that you can see all the beautiful things in here. The Tidings of Christmas is a suite that you can find on page 88 and 89 of the annual catalog. The suite comes with stamps, dies. Hi, Deborah. It also comes with designer series paper and the evergreen, evening evergreen chevron ribbon. And this was used in two of the cards that we designed. We did pull in a different ribbon that isn't really part of a suite. It's just an extra ribbon. Whoa, throwing things. Um, that is evening evergreen, but it's an open weave soft, like, organza type ribbon. So we did pull that in. The stamps here are beautiful. There's So we did a, a card with stockings, we did a card with the stars, and we did a card with uh, foliage, I think. Yeah, but it just only has a sentiment and some foliage. So, so that's where you guys can find this in case you're looking for it. So we just use the stamps. We did not pull in the dies, but know that if you do have a die cutting machine, that these are the dies that would go with it, that would um, cut out the things. So for this class, we are actually going to be fussy cutting, but if you do have the dies, then you could also use them to cut out your images. So here is a, a snapshot of the designer paper that comes with this suite of products, and we used this one over here. This is my absolute favorite um, from this pack, I love this piece the most, and I'd have to say it's in my top five of all designer papers for the it's current right now. And here I, um, I have on this card here that Diane and I put this one on, and then the stripey one. So those are where the designer papers come from. And this is called a DSP sampler. I do this for every new catalog, and um, it's a great resource for discount shoppers that have classes or uh, demonstrators who want to showcase the different colors that match with the paper. So for the, every new catalog, I do sell this uh, DSP sampler. Hi, Bonnie Kelly. Thanks for sharing. Hi, Kim Barr. Hi, Sue Sorrell. So first things first, we have ink pads that we need for this class. And so the colors are Cherry Cobbler, Evening Evergreen, and Soft Succulent. So those are the cards. 
We're not using the dies, we're using the stamps. When you get a stamp set from Stampin' Up, they are generally in a, a case like this, and they are um, either photopolymer or red rubber. Um, they don't sell the woodblock stamps, I don't think, anymore. <laughs> I think they're all gone. Uh, I think that they might have background stamps yet, but mostly they're gone. Hi, Mary Ellen. Um, oh, Tabitha, you would like a catalog. PM me and set up a time to stop by and pick it up. Perfect. Yes. I'm the girl that you met at the post office. Yes, you got it, girl. Okay, send me a message. And um, Chris M. Bertram at SMN.com. I saw I met Tabitha randomly at the post office, you guys, last week, dropping off stuff. <laughs> I love it. So you need these three stamp sets. You'll need stamp these ink pads, this stamp set, and I did pull out some blocks. So I know Annette and um, Janet, you guys got yourself a D block, right? So you have a block, which is perfect, but I do also pull in other size blocks that will work great with these stamps. It's nice to have an assortment of different blocks um, so that you're not always constantly taking the stamp off and replacing it with a new one every time. So these are called photopolymer. Thanks for sharing, Betty. Hi, Vanessa. Um, these are called photopolymer stamps. And Stampin' Up! redesigned the cases so that the insert includes the image and I take them off the cellophane and I put them right on the case inside panel, just like that. Um, I always reference the dies in the inside here too so that I know what the names of the dies are that go with the stamp. Uh, the other thing that you guys don't need but I used, um, when Diane and I made the cards, we used a corner rounder punch. And so this is what the punch looks like and I'll show you on my card how we did that so that those that got kits, you had it done for you already. All right, let's start with this one. We'll get warmed up with this guy first. And so for those that got card kits from me, you'll have all the pieces that you need in your kit, hopefully. Um, side note, all the red rhinestones, you have a strip of red rhinestones in your kit and I believe they got put into this card kit that has the stripey paper. So I did not cut up all little red rhinestones for each card kit. You have a strip and that strip is for all the cards. Um, so find that in one of the envelopes or when you get all done, you can always add your red rhinestones. Okay, so this is the card we're gonna be working. Oh yeah, Susan, I did that as a tip Tuesday, I think, actually not too long ago. So what I do is I reference the name of the, so this is my die set. I reference the name of the stamp set here and then I reference the name of the die on the inside here because they don't always start. So this starts with a T, that starts with a C. And so you would think that it'd be awesome if they'd have the same name, but they don't. Hi, Debbie Michael. So, so if you're stamping with this and you keep your dies in alphabetical order, then you can say, oh, it's Christmas trimmings and you can go find it really quick. So, um, cause you know, it might not keep the dies with the stamp set. Okay, so for those of you that took the class with me, you have a card kit that contains all the cardstock that you need. No prior stamping is done, and I don't provide adhesives. So that's what you're gonna have to provide to like to complete these cards if you get your the kits from me. So this is what the card looks like that we're gonna make first. So we love layers, and Diane loves the double matting. So whenever I design a class or cards with her, we always do double matting on the inside, you guys. It just makes it look so finished, okay? There is a little bit of stamping on the side here. You can kind of see that there's some background here. And we did that by using one of the stamps, okay? So in your kit, you're gonna have um, a green, the Evening Evergreen card base. So it's eight and a half by five and a half. We have it scored at four and a quarter. And you're gonna take that, fold it in half, use your bone folder. So this is a tool. Not everybody uses a bone folder. Some people I've seen take their glue, <laughs> their glue bottles, right? They can do that. Um, some people I've seen them take their Stella pen. You don't have to have a bone folder to burnish the edges, but I have used this one for 20, you know, I've been stamping for 20 years. I've always had the bone folder. So it helps to crease the edge really nicely and make it look polished and crisp. So then you have in your card kit here, you'll have a piece of white and a piece of cherry cobbler and they mat onto each other like this and that's for your inside. So if you remember here, we have an inside and then you'll have a piece of designer. Hi, Melanie, a piece of designer series paper that is three inches by five and a half, which will be for your outside. Hi, Kiathi. You'll have a piece of the, it's like goldish. It's like gold 
um, brushed metallic paper. It's a thin little piece. I think I, you guys had three quarters by five, five, five and a half. It's just a little accent that goes on the side. And then these two pieces are, oh man, they're not the same size. <laughs> Let's see what they should be. Um, the cherry cobbler should be two and three quarters by one and three quarters. So uh, two and three quarters by one and, <laughs> let's see what it should be. It should be one and three quarters. Okay, so I cut my cherry cobbler too short for my, my kit. <laughs> I think I got you guys all right. Hi, Denise. Hi, Deb Norman. Okay, so this should be one and a half. Oh, I, this one's I got a little bit more. It's one and nine sixteenths by two and nine sixteenths. But you guys, I work in nine sixteenths. I don't know if not. I don't think everybody else necessarily does. <laughs> but um, I'm hi Elaine Rebeck. I need to get myself a little bit bigger piece of cherry cobbler. So in your kits, though, I'm guessing I cut them correctly. Uh, somebody will tell me if I didn't. Um, but let's just get here. So I have scraps of cherry cobbler. And what I'll do is, just to show you how to cut paper, which is a good learning lesson here. So my cherry cobbler was supposed to be two and three quarter by one and three quarter. So two and three quarter by one and three quarter. Okay, so that's all it is to cut some paper. You get a little trimmer is a nice little tool to have. And then we can put this back. Now, this guy should fit on here very nicely. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I did or what I was thinking on that, but okay. So when it comes to this card, one of the first things I would do is I would round the corner edges or cor corner the round the edges. Well, let's just say round the edges. <laughs> so this is for those that are curious, I just, it just rounding the corners. Just, it's so cool. I just, I love what it did. And then we rounded the white corners on this one. Now, we're only going to do two sides. So my trick with this punch, if you guys have it, you can't go on the side where it's noted. You have to go right in the middle. So right in the middle, right in the middle. And so you can see what that just did is it rounded the corners. So generally, we have not ever used punches in Let's Just Stamp before, but we looked at it that this is just a cool extra thing to take this card over the edge if you don't have a corner rounder, the card will still look pretty without the, the, the corners being rounded. So I'm going right in the middle and pushing straight down. So we're not done though, because this piece right here also needs the two right corners rounded, okay? And then our card base also needs it. I would not try to put these both in at the same time. I would definitely do them singly like this, and then flip over and then do this one individually. So this is what we did to do the corner rounding. That's it. So then on the underneath here, they are all the scraps that come out. You can put that in the garbage. Okay. So that is how the whole corner rounding process went. <laughs> okay. Nothing crazy. Which punch is being used? That is a really good question, Melanie. This is called the detailed trio punch. And if you look at it just in the light, you can see that there's an oval, a frilly thing, like makes the corner look, I don't know, whatever you want to call that, like a flower kind of. And then this is the one, get the light just right there. It rounds the corner. And if you guys are curious where you can find that, um, you go to the punches section in your catalog, punches, and it is on a page here. 150. Okay, if anybody's looking for it, that's so it makes an oval, that thing right there, and the rounds the corner. It's called the detailed trio punch. So that's what this is right here. I know it doesn't look like that, but this is what it comes like. <laughs> okay, all right, so we're gonna do some stamping, and there's not a lot of stamping on this card, you guys. Actually, you've got a sentiment, some foliage, a sentiment, and then this decorative border here. Okay, so let's set these off to the side and get the pieces that we need for stamping. So the stamp is called, it's the most wonderful time of the year. So let's pull that one out. Um, there's little berries on the inside and then the foliage is the three leaf one. So there's a three leaf and a two leaf. These are the detailed outsides and then these are the solid images for the inside. So we're gonna grab the detailed three one and then the solid three one, okay? So, and a sentiment for the inside. 
So we're, that's what we're using for stamps on this one. And so I know like um, Janet and Annette, you guys only have one block that you're using. You're going to have to use the block and stamp your images, clean the stamp, um, and then re uh, put a new, um, a new image on. So like you're gonna put this one on first. So that's your sentiment. Now these are photopolymer stamps. They have no cushion. <laughs> I call it cushion for the pushing. Um, and when you have the photopolymer, it's good to have a cushion because it helps to give a nice crisp image. So a newspaper would work underneath, a magazine would work, but something to provide a little extra cushion would be very helpful. Okay, so then we're gonna set these guys here so I can see them. The cherry cobbler is what's used for this ink. Hi, Diane Rangi. Um, the ink pad opens up like this and that slides shut. And to shut it, you have to pull it and then snap it shut. You gotta hear that snap, it, like, it, it does snap. Okay, so there's our cherry cobbler. The one thing I highly encourage is for, if you're beginning out and just starting, is to practice on scratch paper versus going straight to your cardstock. It will help you be more successful with your stamping if you practice. And it's just inking up, tapping, 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 getting some ink on your stamp and then stamping it. And practice on your paper until you feel confident that what you're gonna stamp onto your cardstock is gonna look nice. So ink up, so I'm just tap, tap, tap really lightly. And then you're gonna go to your cardstock. Because it's a photopolymer stamp, you can see through it and it helps you to line it up so that you stamp it straight, which is great. Okay, so let the ink marinate on your paper. Diane, we call her Diane the Marinator. She will let her ink sit on that paper and it will transfer, and then you're not gonna have a, a washy looking stamp where half of it's stamped and half of it isn't. Okay, so you're gonna stamp your label. Okay, so that's perfect. When you're done stamping, I always kind of stamp off to get ink off of the stamp. And then this is called a chamois for cleaning. Now, if you don't have a chamois, you can improvise. So you could use flushable wipes. I hate using these with stamps because they leave little fibers on the stamps, <laughs> the majority of the time for me. Uh, the chamois, like just a car chamois for washing your car, I mean, that's what it, it kind of is, just like a regular chamois. Uh, the other thing, I had a private class last week and I forgot to bring all my chamois. So well, you know what we did? We got a paper plate and we took a paper towel and got it damp, set it on the plate, and then people could clean up their stamps <laughs> that way. <laughs> and it worked just fine. So when you're starting out, you can improvise if you don't have all the tools. So like now, um, like Janet and Annette, you will only have one block. You're gonna have to take that stamp off and put the next stamp on this block. And this is the sentiment for the inside. Okay, so you're gonna now ink up that sentiment and I use like a line as a guide to make sure I, okay, I'm gonna stamp that straight. The inside looks like it's stamped right about there. So we're gonna put that right about here. Again, let the ink hit the paper and you're good. Stamp off a couple times. Um, we do need cherry cobbler ink again. Yes, Diane and Stacy, you guys aren't too far away from each other. And Stacy, are you gonna be up in Fond du Lac anytime soon? I have your shirt from the on stage that you got for signing up for on stage and I could mail it to you unless you're going to be coming up to the area anytime soon. So the inside has one of these little cherries or berries whatever you want to call it. So if you only have one block now you're going to have to use this same block for the cherries right? Okay so it works you just have to be very careful that you don't squish down really hard or rock the stamp on the ink. If you do you're going to get ink and I did, I got ink on the corner. So you're gonna have to be careful because you're gonna potentially get ink on the corners and hit your white paper. You don't wanna do that. So you have to be very careful stamping that. Oh, I missed one of the berries, see? Um, Cause I didn't press hard enough. And you can line that, try to line it right back up. <laughs> There's no ink on it. So hang on, let's get a little ink on that guy. And we're gonna try to, the third time, Okay, it worked. So I just got a little ink on that last little berry. Now, my advice is if you're, 
you're not planning to head that way soon, um, it's been nuts by you, that's okay. I will get yours in the mail for you. No problem. I just thought in case you are. Um, oh, but you know what? My mom is potentially meeting my brother down in Madison. And um, she's made a stop at your house. If she's going past, I might have my mom just drop it off at your house. If you're okay with that. <laughs> so, Okay, so cherry cobbler's done. Then the other color that I used here is the soft succulent. And if I say I used, I mean Diane and I used. So this guy, so now when I'm talking about a smaller block, this stamp fits better on a smaller block, okay? So that is gonna get stamped kind of off to the side here. Again, if you wanted, you could have practiced, okay? And then the, so this is where it helps to have extra blocks, you guys. So now I could use this block stamp off on that and then that is going to go right over the top so this is called two-step stamping where you have a detailed solid image a detailed image and then you have a solid image you stamp off once at, and then you get second strength and then you fill it in oh diane you're going to be at the sale on the 27th and you could take it back so stacy if you're okay with that we could have diane help be the middle person <laughs> hi vicky all right, if that works, Stacy, we'll have Diane take it, and then you guys can meet up. Okay, so this is the inside. That's done. We don't need to do anything else with that. But if you recall on the outside of the card, there was some stamping, very little bit here of stamping all the way down. And I believe, I think that we can use soft succulent. Hi, Melanie Chandler. So I'm just going to use... The soft succulent ink. I'm not going to go for the evening evergreen. All right, perfect. We got a plan, Stacy. I love it. Thanks, Diane, for helping out there, too. Um, and we'll see what the sale on the 27th. So I'm just creating a random background. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't like this. It's okay. Um, mine's even more faint over here. So you could stamp off at second strength and do it, but I've started at full strength. So I need to continue in full strength. And I'm just creating a border down the edge here, just to give it some texture. Now remember, that's the only part of the green that gets cover, um, shown. So you really could probably leave it like that, but if you wanna get some little tails in here, you could to fill it in. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the stamping on this specific card. So it's good to, let's get our stamps clean. Perfect, Linda's coming as well. Awesome, I can see both of you guys. Cool. Uh, so yes, the Small Business Showcase and Used Stamp Sale is going to be held in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin on November 27th. I have about 25 vendors and we'll have lots of used stamps for sale. And the event starts at 9 o'clock and it goes until 2 on that Saturday. So anybody that's remotely close is welcome to stop by. <laughs> or if you're not remotely close, you're still welcome to stop by. <laughs> you just got to figure out how to get here. <laughs> so, okay, let's get assembly happy. All right, so I'm gonna put these over here so I don't lose them. Hi, Chris Dudarenki. All right, so this is what we have for pieces. So this will get flipped over and this will get flipped over. I like to glue um, at the same time so that if I've got the glue bottle open, so I use liquid glue a lot. Um, it just allows me to wiggle around a little bit before I need to you know, so like here, I just put it on. I know I put it on crooked, but I just can now wiggle it around until I get it centered. Where if you use a tape runner, you don't have that flexibility. Okay, so there's that one. And then this guy, make sure you're lining up. Good. So can now, because it's liquid glue, I can wiggle around a little bit till I get it where I want it. Okay. And then flip that over. And then that's gonna get glued on your inside. Now my trick with liquid glue, you do not need to squeeze very hard. Oh, Angela, <laughs> you wanted the Let's Just Stamp, and I think I signed you up for both of them. You're, okay, I, I think I thought you wanted this one and the other one, maybe? So, <laughs> oh man, um, uh, but I got you there. And 
Okay, so I don't have you there. Okay, well, we're, we can be unconfused. So Angela, <laughs> I'm like, I know you didn't die, so I know that. <laughs> so we will switch it. So that was minor confusion on my part, I think. I, this was the next um, Let's Just Stamp class that was coming up, and so that's what went first on my list. So I will remove you from this one, and we'll make sure you get on the Snowflake class, which you guys, I'm going to show you the... The, the, what Angel's talking about is Merry Christmas Snowflakes or something. That class is coming up next month. And so I'll show you those um, in a second. So now we have this gold strip here, and this needs to get put on here. So how I would do that is I wouldn't use liquid glue. I would actually use tear and tape. And so your Merry Snowflake dies came in, or your stamp set, Angela, came in um, yesterday, actually. So Angela, underneath the counter in the mud room, you have an order to pick up, and it now contains the Merry Snowflake bundle. That was what we were waiting to have come in. So it's there now. So this is Terran tape. It, it's like a double-sided tape that you have this waxy, yes, remove and marry yourself. You betcha, I'll do it. I'm, I'll wait till I'm done with class and I'll do it. But you can come over anytime and pick up your order if you like. So that Terran tape now is a very sticky, permanent tape. You do not have a lot of wiggle room, you guys. So what I'm gonna do now is line this up, the top, and I'm gonna try to make sure I'm straight all the way down. Oh, and I did it to myself. I, um, <laughs> okay. I cut my little scrap of gold here. I cut it, um, a hair short. Did you see this? I'm missing about a quarter of an inch, but I don't have any tear and tape that I'm going to actually roll the tear and tape back here. You guys in your kits, I know I cut it at five and a half. Um, my kit here, I got to sneak a little piece of gold in there and I'll do that. I can always add that after class. So this got put down and now what we're gonna do is add a little bit of liquid glue behind here. You guys, it's just paper. Naughty Nancy would say, don't stress over it. It's just paper. So we can always improvise. Nobody's ever gonna know <laughs> that, that there's a little sliver that is like a, a patch that we're gonna put there. So this is your lining it up on your corners here, right, like that. And pretend there's gold there, you guys. It's all okay. Okay, I can sneak in a little piece there when the time comes. Okay, so you've got your inside done. And you've got this done. Now there's this piece. I think you guys have about five inches of the Chevron Evergreen ribbon. And so, just gonna, so am I, I'm about the same as you. I'm gonna cut myself five inches so that we both start with the same. Hi, Kathy Cornea. Okay. So we got about five inches. Let's show you how to do this. All right, so tear and tape is your friend. I think I put it back, yep. Tear and tape is your friend. And what you're gonna do is on this bottom right-hand corner, I'm going to prep some tear and tape like that, okay? Then I've got a tail, a little loop, and a tail. So. I'm gonna start with my tail about here. So I've got a little tail there, <laughs> maybe about three quarters of an inch, okay? So that's connecting with the tear and tape on the back. Okay, so then you're gonna fold it down like this and you're gonna make a loop like that, okay? And connect it to the tear and tape. So now you've connected it to the tear and tape and then now that tail is gonna come down like that, okay? Now, that's not really gonna stay very well, okay? So you're gonna need to take a piece of tear and tape and put it over the top of it to help hold it and secure it. So you've got that just woven back and forth. Okay, I'm going to trim that little bit of tape off of there. Okay, that's what we did on that bottom. Now, again, if you don't like the way that we do, like we designed that with the ribbon and you wanna do something different, you're welcome to change it up. It's not gonna hurt our feelings <laughs> at all. You guys, it's your card and you can envision it differently than we might. So I am not gonna peel that paper off though because I don't want it to potentially be sticky in a lower spot. So I'm just gonna put my dimensionals right around it and it's pretty, it's almost the same height as a dimensional. So that will give it height there. And okay, one more there. And then that's gonna get put right on our card, something like that, okay? And then 
with the tails of your ribbon, you do wanna get that rough edge off. Like, you can see it kinda of hanging there. You do wanna just cut that ever so slightly at an angle. And I'm gonna leave the other one because it was a fresh edge that was just fine. So, you guys, in your kit, you have some red rhinestones. I'm thinking that mine are sitting on the other side of the room. <laughs> so, I have a red rhinestone right in the bottom corner here. You can see right there. And then there are two. You can see I got two right there. So there are three of them on this card. So here, here, and here. And that's it for that guy. But isn't that inside awesome? Having that double mat like that. So cool. Okay, questions. Hi, Janet. That's the first one. I mean, it's not so crazy. It's just a little stamping, stamping, and then stamping on the inside. And then it's just, how do you assemble it? So, and don't mind my little missing piece here. <laughs> I will fix that when I am done with class so that I can just sneak a little piece in there. So, okay. That one was oh, so fun. That paper is so pretty. I love that one too. So pretty. Okay, so that's that card. Now, we're going to move on to, oh, this one's so cool too. Okay, so this one is, that. this is my, some of my favorite designer paper. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Okay. So we'll roll right into this one. And in your kits, so this card looks like this. So we really used a lot of evening evergreen paper, you guys. <laughs> we sure did. So you have your evening evergreen base. You'll have two cherry cobbler mats and then a vanilla and the soft succulent. And the vanilla is what looked better with this one, where it's crazy, but this card right here, white looked better with that designer paper, and then with this one, it looked better with vanilla. So differences in warm and cool te um, texture or tones, okay, for stamping. So this is the card, and you'll have your evening evergreen base is your traditional eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Grab your bone folder. Burnish that edge really nicely. Okay, so now this is the opposite. Sometimes I can confuse people like that last card was a vertical card, right? So that's vertical. And then this one's horizontal. So it's always good to like put your pieces in the way that the card is so that you don't incorrectly stamp something. So you have your two cherry cobbler mats, okay? The one's the inside and it goes with vanilla. So these are both four by five and a quarter. And then the vanilla and the soft succulent are three and 13 sixteenths times five and one sixteenth. So I do that kind of matting. Uh, the little designer paper is, I believe it's two inches by five and one sixteenth. So that fits in there nicely. Now, if you wanted to, if you're at home making this card and you want to emboss or step this up a little bit, you could always emboss this mat with an embossing folder and give it texture. Now we chose not to because we wanted to make this appealing to people who might not have a die cutting or embossing machine. So if you're at home and you wanna spruce that up, you could definitely do that, okay? The other thing you'll have in your kit is about six inches of that chevron ribbon, okay? And then you'll also have a scrap of vanilla for your star. You'll have a piece of vanilla that is three inches by one and a half for your sentiment. You'll have a cherry cobbler that is one and 11 sixteenths by three and three sixteenths. So that's gonna be your mat for this. And then the gold, it's like a tan foil. It's from that same brushed metallic paper. Uh, that's gonna be the same size as this one. Okay, and we just offset it slightly. Okay, so then this will go on here. So we need to stamp a sentiment. We need to stamp a star. And then on our inside, we stamp a star and a greeting. So let's get our stamping done. Oh, in your kit, you guys, I also made you an incy teensy little linen thread bow. Okay, so that's in your kit that will go on the star. So I use my bow maker to do that. Okay, so let's get our stamping done. Again, same thing. It's, they're photopolymer stamps. So I'm going to pull in the piercing mat and we're going to get the cherry cobbler ink going. Okay, so open that up and set that, I'm right-handed, so I keep my ink pad on the right side of me usually. So we need this stamp right here. That'll go on our block, ink up, 
Again, tap, tap, tap. You don't need to be squishing really hard on the ink pad. If you felt good about your practicing, you can go straight for it. So I've got this kind of centered, top to bottom, left to right. Give it a second to let the ink hit the paper. All right. Then, oh, that looks nice. Okay, so now we need, what did we stamp on the inside? Seasons, greetings. Okay, so let's put these in here for now. And we're going to grab Seasons, Greetings, and we're going to grab the star. So I'm going to use, this is a C block, so I'll use that for the star. And then this little greeting, we can use, I don't know, that's really little. Let's go with this guy right here. So we'll use that for that sentiment. And our star. Here's the trick with the star, you guys. You have a scrap of vanilla in your kit, right? So what you're gonna do is ink up your star and then you're going to stamp it at full strength on your scrap here. Then, without further ado, you're gonna go straight to your inside and you're gonna stamp the star at second strength. So you're not really wasting any ink. If you would stamp that star dark, you would have a hard time reading your sentiment. But because you stamped it at second strength, it's gonna allow for you to see your sentiment really nice. So that's it for the cobbler. Now we're gonna pull in Evening Evergreen. And then that's going to be stamped with the Seasons Greetings. Again, I'm using a smaller stamp. So Annette and Janet, if you guys are watching this, you, with your big block, you're gonna just have to be super careful not to squish really hard and get ink all over the block. So I'm gonna practice here, see how I like it. Looks good. I'm gonna stamp that in the center of my star. Okay, isn't that cool? That looks really nice, I think. <laughs> I'm pretending you guys are agreeing with me. Okay, that's it for stamping. So let's make a little room, clean our stamps real quick. That's where the chamois comes in. Just grab this. I like to pick up my chamois and handle it. I know some people don't like to touch and they'll go like that. I don't feel like you get in the cracks so good though. So I like to pick it up. I don't mind getting my hand full of chamois, <laughs> chamois ink. Okay, so there's that. We'll clean this off and put that there. Put that there for now. All right, I'll put that and now we can get a little assembly happy. So gluing. So I like to glue like kind of top down. So I'm gonna glue my inside onto my red, but I'm gonna glue the designer paper first onto the soft succulent. Cause then if I cut my designer paper a hair too big or too short, I can always trim it down if I need to or trim the soft succulent down. Uh, and if, I, sometimes there is a pattern for the paper, you gotta look to see what's the top and what's the bottom. But in this case, there not really isn't. Yeah, Jean, I pick up my chamois all the time. I just feel like you can push into the grooves of the stamp better. So I did pretty good at my edges. Now, if you guys got kits from me, you may have to trim off the designer paper if I cut it a hair longer. I always cut hair longer than hair shorter, okay? Because I'd rather you not be missing DSP and have the ability to cut it off if you need to. Okay, so there's that. Flip over, flip over. Nope, don't flip this now. You guys look at the ribbon. I always try to look. I have the ribbon going around this layer. So we're actually gonna adhere that ribbon before we get glue happy here. We're gonna take a couple pieces of tear and tape and put them near the edges. This is where the take your pick tool comes in handy too. It helps to like wedge underneath there and pick it up easier. I didn't pick mine up until I seen you do it. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like you're, it's not like you're afraid to pick it up. You just don't know you should or could pick it up. Hi, Becky Wagner. Okay, so that's going to get adhered now to the back side. So I'm looking at it from the front, making sure my ribbon is straight. And then I just flip my tails over. Okay. I like that. 
if you try to tape it from the back, you might not have it straight in the front. So it's always good to look at it from the front while you do it. And then a little more tear and tape. Now this really secures the ribbon. It's not gonna fall out. And grab your pick tool that lifts up the edge just so then you can get a grip on it. Now we can get glue happy. So that's ready, this is ready, and this is ready. So you guys, if you're gonna have the glue bottle open, you might as well get glue happy. So there's a little glue. I stay about a quarter of an inch away so that it doesn't ooze out on me. Hi, Kathleen from Florida. Okay, now if you're not good with all these things being glue all over, because you might get your hand in it, then maybe don't do that. But if you can manage it, it helps to save on the time with opening and closing the glue bottle. So now this will go on the inside like that. This one will go on the outside. Um, nope, this one will go on the red. <laughs> it's like, that's a lot of green going on. Okay, so that goes there. And then this one goes on the red, like that. And then you can always wiggle it around if you need to, because that glue doesn't dry for about 10 seconds. Okay, you can get glue happy here. And that will go on our front, like that. That cherry cobbler just makes the little berries that are in this paper just pop out so nicely. Love it, love it, love it. Flip this over. We're gonna put some dimensionals on this. Okay, usually do about six. And then I peel all those off. And now what I've done, I'm gonna have just that shimmery paper come out the top and the right side. So. I'm gonna hold it like that so I can eyeball that edge and this edge, like that. Okay, so you got about an, I don't know, a eighth of, like three sixteenths of an inch, I don't know, something like that. Then this is going to have some adhesive, like liquid glue or tear, um, flat glue. Oh, maybe I didn't, did I pop it up? No, I glued it flat. Again, you guys, the popping up and the dimensionalizing and the gluing flat, that's it's pretty much what you want. There's no right or wrong way to popping up versus not popping up. So put that here so we can see. So I got that like that. All right, last, now, if you've got your stars, not last but not least, it's getting there. If you have your dies, you could definitely cut them out with the die cutting machine. But you guys, we wanted to show you you don't need to have the dies. You know, when you start adding dies to your stamp and arsenal or vault, it adds an expense, right? And until you're ready to make a commitment with dies, you can use a scissors. The scissors, the paper snips is 10 bucks. And it is a sharp, pointy scissors that works perfectly fine until you're ready to make an investment in getting a machine. But I'll have you know this, that... <laughs> Now is a great time if you're looking to get the stamp and cut and emboss machine. I will tell you the best deal to do this. Kat just took advantage of this deal. So for right now, if you sign up to become a Stampin' Up! discount shopper, you can sign up and get $125 worth of product for $75, okay? The stamp and cut and cut and emboss machine is a 120. If you add a pack of rum, clear rhinestones or pearls, I think she added pearls to her order, order. then um, she got the stamp and cut boss machine for a hundred, um, for $75 plus taxes, like $79. That is the best deal right now. You know, you could buy the mini one for 60 bucks, but why when you can get the big one for basically 70 bucks? If you look at it, that the rhinestones were $5, you know, so there, oh, that didn't stick. Hang on. <laughs> so hang on. We gotta get this guy so that it, when you use liquid glue, you gotta get it stuck so that it adheres to the paper. Okay, so if anybody's on the fence about signing up and you don't know what to do, or if you're in if that interests you, you guys just reach out. I will help explain anything that you, you don't have to do classes like I do either, if you don't want to. You can be a happy shopper and get a 20% discount on anything that you buy. So, all right, so you saw I put three dimensionals on the back here, three, and then what I'm gonna do is put liquid glue on the other two. 
sides or the other two sides of the star and the three so it's going to go something like that okay so we got our star and then we're going to use a little mini glue dot to put on here so that special runs now till november 30th if you want to um, take advantage of it it's 75 dollars. you get 125 dollars worth of product for 75 and if people are waiting out for celebration i don't know if celebration I mean, it's a good deal. So we just found out that you get two. So the special for signing up during celebration is you get to pick two stamp sets for free out of a catalog. I don't remember if it's a specific one or the new one or either, but you get two stamp sets for free. So if you'd rather save the money and use, you know, get for $75, you get whatever you want. Um, the, the deal for during celebration is you get two stamp sets for free. So, all right. So there's that, you guys. The last thing that we would want to do on this card, <laughs> which you guys have your um, in your kits, you have red rhinestones. I'm at the point where I'm going to stand up and stretch my back <laughs> because um, I did something to it the other day. And it's it feels good if I stand up for a second. So I'm going to go take 10 seconds and I'm going to grab my red rhinestones so that we can put them on these two cards. So give me like 10 seconds, you guys. the red rhinestones come in a pack like this. And what you guys got from me is you got a strip. Oh, 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 Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Yes, you hit the nail on the head. If you're not interested in the machine, but you have cardstock, ink pads, or dyes on your wish list, the seasonal sale starts on the 16th. And so Kathy said, wait till the sale, because if you sign up on the day of that sale, those discounted prices are what you're going to get to take advantage of in your starter kit as well. Okay. So yeah, good call, Kathy. That is great. I'm so glad that you brought that up. So signing up on the 16th, the sale goes the 16th, 17th, and 18th. And so instead of a cardstock pack being $8.75, it's 88 cents less. I think it's 10% off on cardstock. So, um, I just saw Susan Reed that you said that you want the class and I will place an order if that is okay. Yes, Susan, absolutely. I did not see it. So you guys, that is always the thing is if I don't come like talk to you and say like acknowledge something, I don't see it necessarily. So yes, Susan, that is quite all right. Um, you can place an order. When I flip the camera down, you can definitely see the host code and um, apply that to your order before you check out and we're good. So yes. All right, but Kathy, thank you for telling everybody that. That is perfect. So, yes, it's always good to sign up when there's a good sale. <laughs> so, all right, back to the red rhinestones, you guys. You all got a strip like this for me. And so you got like 11 of them, I believe. So I cut strips like that for everybody. So I have some loosey-goosey ones here, and I want to get them used up. So this is where the putty end comes in really handy for the take your pick tool. So we got one there, and then I'm going to put one here. So we questioned the red rhinestones with the cherry cobbler and we both decided that they looked just fine with the cherry cobbler. They were, they were close enough and it worked. So we went with it. Okay. So there's one over here and now we're back on track. Oh, I lost it. Where did it go? Oh, maybe I never grabbed it. I guess I'd only know if I watched the video again and see if I lost one. Okay. So, that's, I know you guys should have some red rhinestones left. You use six of them. You should have five left for the next card, okay? All right, so that's where the take your pick tool comes in really handy with that putty end. It really picks up the embellishments and helps them stick, okay? So now we've got two cards done, officially two done. We got our, you know, this is my favorite part of the card, I think, is embellishing it. <laughs> so, okay, so two down, one to go. Last but not least, but this is the last one that we designed. So definitely not least. So now we need our stockings though. So let's see what the sample looks like. Okay, All right here's our guy. Double matting on this one too, you guys. So we're gonna need stockings and um, Cindy, how many do I have left? That's a good question because Angela said I signed her up for the wrong one. 
So I'm gonna take Angela off. I have two left from what I know. So um, I should have two. <laughs> so if you want one of them, we can put your name down on the list and we'll get you one of them. So um, we need season's greetings. We need the two stockings. Um, what's on the inside? Let's see here. May your days be merry and bright. So we're gonna use that one. Star is done. That saying is done, but we need this guy and this one and this one. Okay, lots of stamps on this one, you guys. So our stocking, we can put him on one of our blocks. The sentiment, can, so this is why having more than one block is a nice thing. You can make do, oh, Carissa, yes, we can make, if you and Cindy, you want the kits, then they're gone. Okay, so there's that. And then here's this one. And this little guy can, so this is, you guys, this is just showing how having an extra block or two is a, a nice thing. You might not have as many, right? But if, even if you had like three or five blocks, it helps the situation. So you're not constantly cleaning and then replacing, cleaning, replacing. So, all right, so you guys, just to be, so I don't forget, we are going to write, Cindy, you can tell me for sure if you want it. And Carissa, I've got you down now. Okay, so I think we're all good now. I think this one's done. All right, so this one's a little different, you guys. So look, we made this open like that. All right, so it has a little flap on the side. Okay, so it doesn't change the size of your paper. It changes where you score them. Okay, perfect, Cindy, um, for game night and for this one, and uh, mailing a check is perfect. Okay, yep, 41 and 17 for this one, whatever that is. <laughs> so, you guys, the difference with this is how you score it. So, the scoring is at three and a quarter and seven and a half, right? So, you're going to score at three and a quarter and seven and a half, but that still gives you the window here of four and a quarter inches to make it a, a standard A2 card size, Okay. So here's this, and then this, when you put this down, you wanna make sure that they line up really nicely here so that they're not overlapping, but they're just meeting very nicely in the middle. So when my mom folds these, she just folds them. She doesn't pay attention to them meeting here, okay? So when you're actually working on putting the card together, that's where you wanna make sure they line up really nicely and then burnish your edges. Okay, so that's your base. It's all about the base. And then our inside, the inside mat is soft succulent, four by five and a quarter. And then the basic white is three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. So that's your inside, but we need to stamp that. So we're gonna set this off to the side, our outside. This mat right here, in case you guys are questioning it, the soft succulent is five and a quarter by three which makes our DSP five and one sixteenths by two and 13 sixteenths. Okay, so that's just gonna go on the outside like that. Our mat, our white mat is three and three quarters. Oh man, it's three and three quarters by two and nine sixteenths and our evergreen is two and three quarters by three and 15 sixteenths. You guys, it's just a hair wider. Like the, the evergreen is just a little bit bigger. Our scrap of the designer paper is three quarters by five and a quarter. And you guys don't have your stockings done, but by the magic of TV, I have mine done. So in your kit, you have a piece of white that is approximately two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So let me see. I think that I'm, I just grabbed some scraps. You guys will have a scrap. I don't know. It's something like this in your kit. It's something that you're going to fit one stocking one way and the other stocking the other way. Okay, so let's do some stamping and then we'll come back and we'll assemble the card. So I guess I tried to be proactive so you guys didn't have to watch me fussy cut. <laughs> okay, so grab your mat again. And this is for the this. And then you've got your stocking. So what you guys have, you have a white piece. One of your stockings is gonna get stamped like that. And then the other stocking is gonna get stamped like that. Okay, they're gonna kind of go opposite. And Diane and I were trying to figure out the best way to cut, like to stamp them. And we tried doing cherry cobbler and then green, and that looks pretty too. 
So you guys, when you're doing your kit at home, you can choose which color stocking you want it to be. If you want it to be red on the bottom, but we did choose whatever this one that doesn't have coloring there goes on the top because you need to stamp the sentiment in there. Okay, but that just shows you, you can switch them around if you like a different look like that. Okay, so let's see here. We need, a, we need to do, let's start, I like sentiments first. Let's do our sentiments. Okay, so we've got cherry cobbler here. Now that saying, I don't know if I even pulled it out. I think I forgot to pull this one out. Yep, I did. So we're gonna grab this guy. So wishing you, <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas, wishing you a joyful Christmas and a Happy New Year. So you're gonna stamp that first near the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna practice, make sure my stamp is on my block good, okay? So that's gonna go near the bottom, maybe about three quarters of an inch to an inch above it. Okay, so something like that. Good. All right. Then I need this block. <laughs> so I'm going to clean it right away. And on the inside, it looks like, where's my inside? Oh, I put it on the inside. Oh, yeah, this went crazy, you guys. I went star crazy on this. I'm like, I kept going and going and going. And then just like at the end, I'm like, oh man, I, I think I stamped too much. <laughs> and that can happen. <laughs> okay, so we need evening evergreen. Okay, evening evergreen is may your days be merry and bright. And that's on our inside. So we're going to stamp that a little bit more to the left corner because we're going to save room for our stocking. Okay, so may your days be merry and bright. That's good. Um, the outside here, one of our stockings is green. So we're going to do that now as long as we have the green open. So this is where you have to choose which stocking do you want to be the solid and which one do you want to be the frilly detail. So I'm going to do this one. Hi, Jody Starman. Oh, good. Penny's back. Glad the horses got fed. <laughs> they were probably really happy. All right. So there's the one stocking. Okay. Now the other one I'm gonna do in Cherry Cobbler, which I have open over here. So that'll go there. And then I'm also gonna stamp my stocking on the inside. And I have it hanging. <laughs> Glad Dad got fed too, <laughs> that's good. So then we've got this guy hanging from the top here, like that, boom. And then, <laughs> you guys, I went star crazy with stars all over. So we're like, well, we haven't used the star stamp yet. So maybe we should use it. Uh, and so that's the star, but I need a block for it. So as long as I've got this open, we're going to go for the season's greetings in here. Okay, that just fits in there. I think they did that on purpose, you guys. They, they made that season's greetings fit right in the stocking. Okay, so that's clean. So now I can flip this guy off. <laughs> Not like giving it the finger, you guys. Just take it off. <laughs> All right. There's two stars, you guys. There are, yes. Okay, so there's two stars. One's a solid one and one's an outline. And honestly, I feel like I did too much activity over there. So... <laughs> Oh, ha, ha, that was supposed to go to your daughter. That's funny. Oh, I got red stars. I didn't mean to do that. I was reading Penny's comment. <laughs> well, better get it to your daughter. So, okay. You guys, you can really do what you want. If you don't like how much I got for star action on this, you can completely not do as much as me. I know Diane made hers even different. Hi, Kay. So, it's really what you envision, you guys. I just, once I started, I didn't know how to stop. So I put stars on my stockings and I'm purposely not making them straight because it was really hard to stamp them straight. And then I put one there and you could put one over there. <laughs> and then I did one at second strength and I didn't like it. So I'm going to do that one in full strength over here. Okay, so that's the solid. And then there's an outline. So put one there, put one there. 
and then for good measure we'll put one more there <laughs> so honestly if that's too much for you guys you don't have to do that much it's okay so that's our inside that's done these are done and then by the magic of tv mine are cut out so i'm going to work with these for putting that together and this guy's left okay it's not rocket science as us cellular would say but i would start with my berries because they um they are red and everything else kind of fills in around them. So I'm going to take the berry stamp here and I've got this one coming off the side over here like that. I've got just a little bit coming from the bottom and then we've got this one going there and then I've got one at the top over like that. So I put the berries in first. Then let's get the ink shut so that you don't accidentally take that. We didn't use evergreen, but we did use, we used succulent, soft succulent. So let's get this on here. So if you notice there's a set of three and there's a set of two. So the three is what we're gonna grab first and we're gonna do the detail, okay? And then this one's gonna come up from the bottom. This one's gonna come up from the bottom and that's a tour. So let's get our two, let's find the two, and that one's coming up like that. Then there's another two one, <laughs> that makes sense. There's a two there. I've got, let's see here, a three -er coming down here, and then there's one more oddball kind of like that. That's, that's the outlines, okay? Now it's the inside more solid image. So. You gotta take this and remember to stamp off. So stamping off gives you second strength. And what it does is it fills it in. So you can see that one's filled in and that one's empty. So we're gonna go around and fill in the twos first. And then we're gonna do the threes second. <laughs> okay, so this one's gonna come over here. Fill that in. They're photopolymer. You should be able to line them up to see where they need to stamp. So like that. Hi, Debbie Schultz. Hi, Barb Calvin. I just did the second. Okay, so then right there. Okay, so I did a little have like there's more up in this corner and then it kind of focuses around the sentiment. And then what you'll do is add your stockings like that they're hanging from up there. That's what we've got. Okay, so I'm gonna shut my ink pad. It's always good to keep shutting your ink pads when you're done with them. They are water-based, so it's nice to keep them shut so that they don't dry out. That's all stuff that needs to get cleaned. <laughs> okay, so we're done with this, and we're gonna put these away. I think I had them cleaned. So this goes down here, and that goes there. Everybody doing okay so far? So if you're not, let me know, and I can help help with anything, but we're gonna get a little bit glue happy. So we can glue that, we can glue that, we could glue this, and we can glue this. Okay, that's a lot, I know that's a lot, but if you line them all up, you can add glue. Hi, Carrie Peterson. Okay, so this gets a little glue, that gets a little glue, that one does, and a little behind there. So. Get this guy, he goes on this mat, right like that. Good deal. Then this one goes on here, like that. This guy goes on the front. Now, they look like little Christmas trees, so, um, <laughs> or little fern things, look. This one, I put them going the other way. <laughs> to me, now, today, they look like Christmas trees. So I'm gonna glue them this way. <laughs> um, you can see on this one, I put them the opposite. I made them look like little fern things, I guess. So, but they do look like trees, so maybe they should go that way. Okay, and then this is my inside. And you saw, part of my little guy put a little bit of adhesive right on there when it slipped underneath. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna come back and get that off with my adhesive eraser. So right there, it's got a little glue. I can see it. But 
it's gonna dry and then I'm gonna grab my adhesive eraser and I'm gonna get it off because it did slip under there and it did leave a little tacky. So we're gonna do these two now. So this is our inside. This is our outside mat. Okay, so we'll set him over there and do this one next. And see that's dry now. So we're gonna grab the adhesive eraser. So you can see slightly, they got glue right there. So you take an adhesive eraser and it erases the adhesive. And now you can't see it, it's gone. Woohoo! Okay, so now this guy is gonna go on the front like that. All right, perfect. Now, you have about 10 inches of this ribbon in your kit. So, let's see if I wrote 10 inches. Oh, I didn't write, so I think it's about 10 inches. But what you're gonna do, this is called the lamb technique. <laughs> Kelly coined it that, so she loves doing this. It's weaving the ribbon back and forth. And so what you need to do is flip this over. So this is the left side, so it's on the bottom here. You're gonna take tear and tape and you're gonna run your tear and tape down the length of this, okay? Don't worry if you go over the edge. Like you can see that it's hanging that much. I cut it or I ripped it that much. It's okay. So when you take this off, then you just roll that right back and then you don't have to worry about taking your scissors and cutting it. Okay, so this is this open weave ribbon. So it's solid on the edges and then sheer on the inside. And so I start on the bottom and I put a little tail on the back here and then what I'm gonna do is weave it. So I caught it right there, and then I bring it back like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna weave it. So you're just gonna keep, and I do it, I watch from the front. I don't look at the back, but what I'm doing is, I'm hold, my fingers are back here, not letting me go too far. So here's that one, and then that finger's pushing it down into the next run of tape here, okay? Then we're gonna bring it up and you're just working your way back and like up and down. Some humps you might get more curvy. <laughs> Some humps might be more straight. <laughs> so thanks for sharing Penny Powell. I just saw that. Thanks for sharing Donna. Hi Donna, by the way. <laughs> so here's this. So we're just, so that's what the back looks like. You're just weaving it back and forth. And then we got one more. We got room for one more up here and so when that, you hit the end there, you're gonna, you know, I'm not sure, I think you, that was about, cause it's about a half inch, and I think I gave everybody about 10 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can go lighter, I mean, looser or tighter with the, I guess the humps. <laughs> um, so if you get to the end and you're a little short, you can refinagle it by just pulling it right off. But when you get it to the way that you want it, so that's what it looks like. When you get it the way that you want it, oh, there you can see it. You're gonna take another strip of tear and tape and you're gonna put that over the top. Thanks for sharing, Barbara. This goes right over the top. And this time I am gonna get my glue scissors and make it so that it's not hanging over. There, perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna secure it with tear and tape, like that. That's gonna hold it so that they don't come out. If you don't put that extra piece of tape on the back to hold it, it will eventually work its way and come out. And then this is popped up with dimensionals and I'm not taking the, let me see if I did. Nope, I didn't. See, I just secured it with the tape and I didn't untape it. So you definitely could do that. It would, let's do it. And what you do is you just take that off and it'll nicely secure it to the paper. But I'm gonna put dimensionals on this as well, but I'm only gonna put the three on that side, which is the left side. And then I'm gonna come over here and put three here. And now I'm not gonna end up going over the edge, which is perfect. So you can kind of picture the dimensionals are gonna go here, here, and here. And then you've got the five over here. And then you're not going over the edge at all. So that's my trick on that. Pick off all of these. So this ribbon ended up being about the same height as the dimensionals when it's said and done. So that's why I did that. I took it off. Okay, so now this will go, it slightly overlaps that panel on the right, like the flap on the right. 
Okay. Okay, so that opens like that. So far, so good. We have to add our stockings yet. So these, the one on the right is popped up and the one on the left is flat underneath. Got paper everywhere. So you guys use the ends of those dimensionals that you get. They are perfectly fine. Almost done with the sheet, not quite. There's like two left. <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> All right, so that comes off. That's prepped. And then this one, it has a little liquid glue. So he's gonna be hanging like that. And then this guy's going over the top like that. It's like they're hanging from the tree <laughs> up there. Okay, so you guys should have five red rhinestones left in your kit to use. And those five are for, whoa, the five are for this card. So I've got two that are over here like that. And then I've got three, whoa, three, one, two, three. Okay? Just to bling it up a little bit. So we use the red rhinestones on each one of the cards. So you got the five of them, three on the other and three on the other. And when you open this up, <laughs> lots of stars for you. <laughs> and I almost use up this little strip of um, red rhinestones. <laughs> you guys, if you watch me a time or two, you know I love cleaning up something and throwing away the packaging. <laughs> It's like such a sense of accomplishment when you actually make it through the end of a package or something. So, all right, let's look at what we had here. We're gonna bring back all three cards so you can tell me which one you liked the best. So this is my sample though. So we had, the first one we did was very simple with a sentiment and some extra foliage stamped in the inside, double matted. This guy was a, the stone with a star with some added some, some brushed gold and tan and then double mat the inside with the star. You guys, the double matting is awesome. <laughs> like Diane loves it. <laughs> she comes to class and she will take cards home and then double mat them later. <laughs> and then this one is the stockings that we just finished, double matted on the inside to match. And so here you go. We got three beautiful Christmas cards. So these are my favorite kinds of Christmas colors. I love the evening evergreen with the cherry cobbler. Let's get the angle right. So cherry cobbler and then the soft succulent. This paper right here is so awesome. So this tidings and trimmings paper, all of this stuff is in the annual catalog, not the mini catalog. So we had to go back to the annual to bring this one. So Susie liked the stocking. Cindy loves them all, but the first one is her favorite, which is that. Um, you guys love, love, love this one. Barbara shared, awesome. Love them all, but really like the rounded corners. I know, Robin. We don't generally bring that out, and that's been around for a long, long time. Just, it makes it look classic, I think. You guys like, Sandy likes the stocking. Um, double matting really adds a nice touch. It sure does. So there you guys go. We got one more class in the books today. Tammy says all, but the star card is your favorite. Awesome. Jody likes them all, but you would pick the star as well. Awesome. Okay, so there we go. Fun cards, you guys. The rounded corners, yeah. So when, okay, you guys, I started stamping 20 years ago. 2001, 2000, somewhere around there. So it's been over 20 years. And I remember corner rounding way back then. So that corner rounding's been around, but you don't always think to pull out the corner rounder just to add a little bit to your cards. And it just adds a lot. So Karen can't choose just one. I like it. Julie says all. Karen says they're all nice. So awesome. Cool. So if you guys are, again, watching the replay, you didn't catch me live, and if you have questions, always just reach out to me via email or text or Facebook message. Um, the stocking. You guys really like the stocking and the star. Awesome. So we got to do some business, though, you guys. We got a little business to take care of. So we are going to do, might have to get one more card ready. <laughs> I love it. Donna likes some stockings as well. Um, okay, so we need to do the gingerbread at Memories and More. Um, door prize. Okay, so if you guys didn't get enough of the gingerbreads, I'm going to flip down really quick. I'm going to show you what's, oh, let's do this. This is what's coming up for Let's Just Stamp. So this was the confusion with Angela. Angela signed up for this class. So this is going to be Let's Just Stamp for next month. So I know that that says Merry Christmas on it, but you guys, if you get these kits, we specifically, Diane and I specifically designed these to be winter cards. 
right? So we chose non-Christmas colors. We used the Snowflake Wishes stamp set, which is in the annual catalog, and we totally went non-Christmassy, but they could be made into, like this one is that, there's a sentiment that says Snowflake Wishes for a very Merry, for a Merry Christmas. Freesia with Misty. This is polished pink with Coast pool party and then misty with pale papaya so we pulled in in colors you guys we went crazy on the in colors and this one is a book card too so you guys this one is available you could start registering for this oh i didn't you guys <laughs> look at me <laughs> pooey on me i didn't finish my card so that's supposed to get glued down <laughs> and then <laughs> that makes it a book card <laughs> is what i was trying to show you was then this goes on the inside like that so it's a book card all right, so you guys, this class is going to be, when is it? Good question. Oh, I had to change it. It's December 12th. So December 12th at, I think it's at 1 p.m. I have my team holiday gathering at four. And so this is gonna be at one before. I had to change it. If you guys have an old schedule, I originally had this class as December 19th. But family comes first, and my mom said that is when my brother and his fiance and the kids are going to be um, at their house for Christmas. And I want to be able to participate in the Christmas festivities. And so I moved this class up to be December 12th at 1 p.m. So that's why there is a slight change. Um, in case you did sign up for it and you think it's the 19th, it is the 12th. Uh, and this one will, it's already published. I think it's already out on the, the calendar. So, um, so that's what that one is. And then let me flip back down. If you guys have a hankering for more gingerbread after the gingerbread class this afternoon, these are the ink, paper, scissors for next month. You guys, I have 10 sets of these left. Um, it comes with a goodie bag with acrylic shapes and the red ribbon, and your kits will contain all the cardstock, die cut, embossed the way it needs to be, um, and you'll just have some stamping. All of these are designer paper that you don't have to stamp. You only have to stamp four sentiments, you guys, and then whatever you choose to put on the inside, okay? So if you're looking for ink, paper, scissors, that's the gingerbreads coming up. So, okay, that is what I needed to talk to you guys about. So um, if you need um, anything for those classes, you can always reach out if you're not certain what supplies are needed. I don't always have the instructions written like instantaneously, but if you need to know ink color pads or what kind of stamp sets you need, I can always just tell that to you. So, okay, so let's flip down. And we're going to do, hi Kim, we are going to do a, a random number generator for 24 people because Frankie Canada took the last gingerbread class. So all 24 are accounted for. So we'll just do 24. So we're going to pull up, we'll pull up here, random number generator. So random number generator. We have 24 people. So winner, winner, chicken dinner, drum roll. Okay. 15 is, where's 15? Dawn Funk, you are number 15 right here. So I'm going to put a star next to your name. You will win a door prize from me for this class. Okay, so then that was gingerbread class. Then let's just stamp. You guys, I'm going to flip up real quick while I number. So what we had, Barb was one. Leslie, you're number two if you're watching. And Janet is three, Tammy is four, and I don't have orders, so for, I don't know if Cindy, Cindy, did you just say you were gonna place an order, I think? So we'll include you, because you said you were gonna place an order, and I'm, a, I'm like, I, if you will, you say you're gonna do it, I trust you're gonna do it, so so we'll put you in for the drawing. So I have five people that place orders to get this class today for free. I think Sue and, no, it's Susan. Susan Reed, you said you were going to. Oh, you guys, I can't remember. <laughs> we're going to take a chance. I'm going to put Susan and Cindy in for the drawing, you guys. Um, and if for some reason you win the prize and you didn't place the order or don't end up placing the order, then I will randomly draw somebody else later. So all good. We'll include you just in case. So I have six people then. And out of six people, the winner, winner, well, we'll flip down so you guys can see the number. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Number four is Tammy Steckling. Tammy, you were number four, okay? So I put a little star next to your name. You just ordered some kits, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'll make sure that your prize goes in your next package of card kits that you get. So congratulations, Tammy. You won the door prize for the Let's Just Stamp today. So what else? Oh, we're not done. We have card winners. Okay, so let's flip back down, you guys. 
And let's get this going here so I can make sure I can see you guys. If you're ever trying to find where I am, you have to just go to the videos and when you get to the videos, it should be the top one that's going right now. Okay, so we have these cards right here, you guys. These were the ink paper. You're very welcome, Tammy. Yes, Cindy, I figured it out. <laughs> in case, you, um, in case I, you didn't win, so it's all good. If you do or don't place an order, we'll figure that out. I was just trying to like remember things. <laughs> so, um, oh, Sue would like the gingerbread one. Perfect. So let's um, let's do this real quick. Sue wants IPS gingerbread. So I got that. Okay, so you guys, this was the whimsy class that we did a couple weeks ago. It's the ink, paper, scissors. I think it was on the fourth that we did it. So if you missed that class and you want to watch it, just go to ink, paper, scissors with uh, whimsy and wonder. So this is what we'll do. So brrr, winner, winner, chicken dinner. This card goes to Vicki Lynch. Okay, so Vicki Lynch, you are the winner of this pretty card right here. Misty Moonlight with Blushing Bride. All right, da -da -da. winner, winner, chicken dinner. Look at that one. That was my 10 pound card. Um, Jeannie Parker, your name was drawn for this beautiful card. Very nice. And then da -da -da. Kathy Groves, your name was picked for this one. You're lucky winner, you. So that one will be coming your way. And last but not least, this hot pink, polished pink card. I love that with the vellum on the top with the trees underneath. All right. Susie Stocks, you are the lucky winner for this card. Um, yes. All right. So congratulations, Susie. I saw Cindy. You want, let's just stamp with the snowflakes. I see that. So I wrote that down. So what did we forget? <laughs> I always think at the end when I get done with class, it's like, what did I say I was going to do and that I didn't do? And if you guys help me remember, we're good. So I did say we were going to do the door prize for the gingerbread, which we did. I said we were going to do the door prize for the Let's Just Stamp, which we did. We announced the winners for these cards. You guys, Tip Tuesday, I talked about coloring doilies and coloring snowflakes. You're very welcome, Cindy. And I will announce the winner of the doilies. So there was this pack of doilies that I said I was going to give away. That will be announced in the Tip Tuesday on Tuesday when it airs. Um... <laughs> yes, so we'll connect after class and we can figure out everything you need. <laughs> so, um, and the next thing that you guys are going to have, oh, tomorrow night is mystery card making night. Oh my goodness, you guys, I almost forgot that. But yes, yeah, six o'clock central, we're going to be making a mystery card. And I hope you have all your clues ready to go so that we can make our non-traditional, non-A2 style card. And I think it's right in line for what's happening with the holidays that are coming up. So so it's it's a non-traditional type of some size of card. So I know the sizes might throw you off a little bit, but work with me. Try to follow the clue number one as much as possible. If you need to find clue one, it's in the events calendar, either in Facebook or in my website. I uh, just look for the description and you might need to expand it and show more and we'll make that tomorrow night. Okay. So tomorrow night's mystery night, tip Tuesday and Tuesday. Wednesday is in person here with um, the painted Christmas class. And then Thursday we'll be doing the painted Christmas class. Okay. And then Friday, holy Moses, Friday is stamp a stack. You guys, I do have four sets of stamp a stack left. Let me flip down real quick in case anybody wants this class. I have four unaccounted for, right? So it's 16 card kits. The cost is $50. Mailed is $59. You get a pack of designer paper, a roll of ribbon, a pack of red gems, and you get envelopes to go with. And it's these four designs, and you'll make 16, and you have supplies left over to make a lot more, okay? So Painted Christmas stamp -a stack is the 19th live with a Facebook live and then in person, like live <laughs> in the hive, like really in bodies is the 20th. Um, That is this coming week. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you guys, I have these all ready to go. So if anybody wants to sign up for this, they would go in the mail tomorrow and you would probably have them in time for class on the 19th. So Reach out to me if you're interested in the stamp -a stack Four left, okay? So I planned, I think I planned for 24 and I ended up with 20 right now. So 
if I don't have them gone during the week, I know that you guys will, <laughs> you will watch and you might want them during class. So, and then I can always mail them out to you afterwards. So no problem. So, oh, hang on. You guys, this one, the other one too. I think I have about two sets. This is what we're doing on Thursday night. I think I have about, this is the painted Christmas suite class. I think I have about three sets of this card left, okay? So I made 72 sets, and I think I'm down to my last three, okay? So you guys got to tell me if you want any of these. Oh, Tabitha wants a stamp -a stack Okay, so we'll do Tabitha stamp -a stack Sue stamp -a stack okay? And I think we need to connect now. So Tabitha, all right. So and uh, Tabitha, if you're here in Fond du Lac and you want to make those cards in person here, then you could come on Saturday during the day. I think I only have in person like seven or eight people. So it's a smaller class. And then you can make them here with me. And Tabitha has never seen it, but this is the hive. I was telling you, I was telling Tabitha at the post office that I added on <laughs> to my house. I think I told you that. So yes. Um, did you see I want December 12th class? December 12th class. No, I didn't, Penny. So Penny, um, December 12th was the monthly class and I do have some of them left. So um, I have it written down on my post-it note now. So it's a good thing that you asked again because I did not see it. So you guys, when the comments come through, sometimes they come through a little fast and if I don't look down for a few seconds, I might have it already scrolling up. So it's always good to check with me. If you don't hear me say, oh yeah, I got you down for this, then maybe you don't. So <laughs> see, see Tabitha, I try to remember as much as I can. <laughs> so, all right, perfect. So Tabitha, I'll be watching for an email from you. You saw my email address or you could text me and we'll figure out how you want to do the um, stamp a stack. And then Cindy, Sue, Penny, um, Angela, we'll get you straightened out. We'll get everybody straightened out with, um, with classes. So, all right. I'm looking around. It's like, what did I forget? You guys, I still owe you a swap card showcase. I have the swap cards from uh, October for the customer swap. And now I did a Christmas card swap with some people on my team. And so I need to pop on at some point and it'll be sporadic. And I'll do a swap card showcase, showcasing some of the cards that I got recently for those swaps. So, It'll be spontaneous though. <laughs> so, and it might even be tonight. <laughs> I'm not sure. I have to make some chicken noodle soup though. I roasted a chicken on, I think Wednesday or Thursday and I have all the, the meat and the broth and um, I just got some carrots and mushrooms and I am making some chicken noodle soup tonight. That's what's on the docket for me. <laughs> so I wish I could share it with all of you. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, that's it in a nutshell, I guess. So, Thank you so much for tuning in with me. I, I love all your support and I appreciate all your orders. If you don't have a, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that you work with, I would love to earn your loyalty and I would help you with all your crafting needs. And for those that are with me, I appreciate you guys so much. You help me love to do what I do and I couldn't do that without you. <laughs> so, all right, if you need anything, I'm always here. Uh, I may not get back to you within 10 seconds, but I'll try my best <laughs> to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So yes, Cindy had a wonderful time. I hope that's always what you guys have is fun with me. Um, this is all about like not thinking about the crazy stresses of the day and just sitting back, having some therapy, stamping, making something beautiful and sharing it with somebody that you love. So, all right, you guys have a great night as well. And we'll see you uh, tomorrow night for Mystery Card Night. Lots of sunshine, love and hugs to all of you guys. Bye.